Good day everyone. Welcome back to my training series, Understanding EMV. This is the 15th video in the series. Uh, and in this video, we will be covering step three of the EMV transaction. Right, so just to recap, the EMV transaction falls under the EMV acquiring section of the training course. So let's, let's get straight into it. So we'll start off with the recap you know, of, of, of the previous videos uh, the, the, that I've made around the EMB transaction. So remember we had Bob uh, who is at the comic book store, he's purchasing a pair of socks. Uh, uh, the teller has rung up the purchase on the till, has asked him you know, how would you like to pay. Bob says, look, I'd like to pay with my credit card. Uh, and you know, it, it so happens that the store has an EMB capable terminal and Bob has uh, an EMB capable or a chip card. Right? It, it, and so because both both the terminal and the card are EMV capable, then you know in this example we, we selected EMV or chip as the technology selection. Uh, once the chip was inserted into the POS device, uh, the, the POS device powered up the card, powered up the chip, uh, you know, and it read the multiple applications available on the card and on the terminal. It created a candid list of mutually supported applications. Uh, uh, it, it derived a meaningful user-friendly name, either application preferred name or application label, uh, which, it, which it then, you know, Related to the to the candidate list, and it presented it to to Bob to the to to, to the user on the pause terminal screen. Uh, the human being, the cardholder, selected the relevant application that, that they would like to to use for a transaction, and this brings us to today's video. Right. So where we are today is. Well, there has been an agreement between the card and the terminal regarding which virtual card on, 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 on the physical card will be used for this transaction. And so we're now at a point where this uh, particular virtual card is ready to have an engagement with, with the POS device and to start communicating and to start you know, ex exchanging data with one another that are relevant and critical uh, to the transaction taking place. All right, let's get into this. Okay, so, so so once the application has been selected, the terminal starts the actual transaction, right? Or it initiates application processing, right? Now the terminal requests certain pieces of information from the chip. This request is referred to as the get processing options command. The chip will respond with the following data. Okay, it will it will supply the terminal with the application interchange profile tag edit two, uh, and, and we've we've covered AIP in in the EMV issuing section a few videos back, and basically the, the application interchange profile or the AIP is the it's it's the CV of of the card, and it tells the terminal you know what kind of authentication and verification is supported by the card. Uh, the card also returns the application file locator, tag 94. Uh, you, you guys will also remember this from a previous video. Uh, you know, we refer to it as a treasure map. And basically, the card sends this to the terminal and, and tells the terminal, hey, to, hey, Mr. Terminal, I've got all those pieces of information that you may require. You know, your, your, your is where they are located on me. So, you know, feel, feel free to grab a spade and go digging. Right. So that's basically what that's for. So if, if we look uh, in a bit more detail into this interaction between the card and the terminal, you know, I've, I've, I've mentioned before that there are you know, many different types and brands of tools that you could use. Uh, get one of them. Uh, they, they, were, they generally tend to be quite similar. Uh, and if you are working in EMV, it is important that you can actually grab the lower level logs to do diagnostics and analysis. Right, so I've I've used a tool that I'm familiar with, um, and I've, I've I've basically just you know you'll see throughout the videos I will I will just drop in sample logs, uh, or sample transaction logs. So what the conversation 
between the terminal card looks like in GPO, GPO being get processing options. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so we see the IFD, which indicates a terminal, you know, issues a get processing options command. Okay. And what you'll find is that the card, the ICC, will respond with a string of data. Okay, now what's important is you'll remember on the previous slide we referred to tag 82 and tag 94. So there's tag 82, application interchange profile, and there's tag 94, which is your application file locator, your AFL. Right, and I mean, if, if, you, if, you, if you try to interpret, you know, what the string means, just a little bit of data analysis, uh, but basically tag 82 is application interchange profile, the length is 02, which means the value is 5A. So there's the tag, there's the length 02, and there's the value 5800. Here's it there. And if you if you actually translate this into what it means in English, 5800 means uh, SJ is supported, uh, you know, which, which tells me this is an old card. You know, if, if SDA is still supported by the card, card only verification is supported. So yes, the card does support whatever form of, 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 of CVM and during a transaction, the expectation is that terminal risk management should be performed. Okay. Uh, and then we've got the application file locator. And yeah, there's, there's some length is OC, which is hex, so decimal is 12 and, and there's a value and you know, obviously the terminal can interpret this, but what's 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 important is that the card does respond, does supply a nine thousand response SW one SW two response, which indicates that uh, this this particular interaction between the terminal and the card was successful. There was no breaking communication, or there was no data missing, or anything like that. Now that the terminal has the application file locator, right? Uh, it, it, it got the treasure map, so it, it, it knows X mask marks the spot and it knows that it needs to go and look for information. So it'll now send multiple read record commands to the application to retrieve the data listed there. Okay. So just remember, in EMV, uh, you know, we rely very heavily on TLV, right? Tag, length, value. Okay. During this phase as well, if there is a PDOL personalized on the card and the PDOL, will be sent to the terminal. Remember, the PDOL is the request uh, by the card to the terminal for the terminal to supply certain terminal-specific pieces of information back to the card for the card's own risk management purposes. Okay, so the terminal will send multiple read record commands for application to retrieve the data listed. The following tags uh, are typically listed. So, so if, if if you're wondering what sort of information uh, you know is is supplied in the AFL and, and what kind of information the terminal would need to retrieve from the card, you know, here's a basic list of what you could expect. So basically, the terminal says, you know, uh, you know, with the application or virtual card, I need your pen. Your primary account number, tag five A. Uh, if you have a pen sequence number, please get. I'd, I, I, I'd like to know it as well. Uh, I need to know the, exp the expiration date of the application, the effective date of the application, uh, the, three is the three issuer action codes. Remember, issue action codes are shared with the terminal. We have covered these in the EMV issuing section before. Uh, the CVM lists are basically a list of the various CVM types that the card does support. Uh, it also asks for the track to equivalent data. And, and, and this is added to the ISO 8583 message if, if the transaction does go online. Uh, the application effective date, uh, so apologies, I see that repeated there. Uh, issue a country code and application usage control. Right, so typically, this is the kind of information uh, that the terminal would, would require from the card. Okay. So once the terminal has received that AFL, it's, it's, it's now ready to, to start doing those command read records to actually retrieve that information, right? So you, you, here's what the conversation looks like. Uh, terminal says, you know, it, it issues a read record command and, and the ICC, the chip, responds. 
Okay, so there's there's another small block. So let's 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 look at what what the chip has responded with. Uh, so, <clears throat> excuse me. Okay, so if 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 you look at it, you'll see some of the tags that, that we spoke about before. So, for example, tag twenty five. So five F twenty five has a length of 03 and the value is 040101 and there, there it is here, right? So tag 25, length of 03 and value is 040101. Let's just look at one more, so application exp expiration date. Uh, so it's 5F24, the length is 03, which means the value is 091231, right? And there we have it, 091231. And, 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 and you know, I mean, you, you can infer the horizontal tag from this pattern. Right. As you can see, primary account number, pen sequence number, uh, the three issue action codes, etc. And until we get a successful, right? So during this phase of the transaction, there are pieces of data that are also exchanged to enable the subsequent transaction phase to take place. Okay. So outside of the AIP and and the AFL, uh, that. There are additional pieces of data that are exchanged, and, and uh, this data would relate to offline data authentication, CVM, etc. Important to note: uh, if if during this exchange of data, if certain chip data is missing, so we, you know, uh, the terminal will record this in a, in a special log call, TVR, right? Uh, uh, TVR stands for Terminal Verification Results, uh, and it's a very important piece of information during an EMV transaction. So I, I need all of you to remember that TVR is your best friend. Okay, so as you work in EMV, you'll find that a lot of the time you'll be looking at TVR data to, to try to understand what happened during a transaction. All right. So just understand that during this initiate application processing or, or read application data phase, data is exchanged between the card and the terminal. Uh, however, if if some of the data that the terminal has asked for from the card is not supplied by the card, it's not supplied by the chip, uh, then this uh, this outcome, this this event of, of chip data being missing gets recorded on a on a report or a log that we call TVR, which stands for Terminal Verification Result. Okay, TVR is your best friend, and you need to think of it as the terminal's diary, where it is recording its experiences from its point of view throughout a transaction. So the TVR uh, is a picture of the world, a view of the world, or, or, or rather a view of the transaction, specifically from the viewpoint of the terminal not from the viewpoint of the card. So basically, whatever experience a terminal goes through, so the terminal says, uh, I, I asked for some information from the card. Uh, uh, you know, I asked for seven pieces of information. I only got back six. Uh, and so that, that one important piece of data that wasn't supplied to me is of concern. So I'm going to make a note of it in TVR, in, in my diary, uh, you know, just so there is a record of this event taking place. Okay. Um, that I think, I think that covers TVR at a nice level at this point. Uh, just note that we will be speaking about TVR uh, in, in greater detail, you know, later on uh, during the terminal action analysis phase of the transaction. Right? We will cover TVR in, in slightly more detail, and we, we will actually you know, go through what what the TVR report looks like. Okay, and this basically brings us to the end of this video, right? So we've we've done, so in the transaction already uh, that, that the Bob is trying to complete, we've, we've done a technology selection phase, we've done an application selection phase, uh, and we've done an exchange of data, which is step three, which is the read application data phase. Okay, so that's complete. In the next video, we are going to speak a little bit about offline data authentication. Okay, uh, so yeah, I, I look forward to catching you guys in the next video. Uh, thank you very much for, for joining me in the session and yeah, look forward to chatting with you guys again soon. Uh, 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 cheers everyone, bye-bye.